Okay, welcome to, we're going to do the highlights of the, the Australian Road Nationals that just finished. This is going to be quite a controversial video, so watch till the end. Very, very controversial uh, video, this one. Anyway, let's start with the uh, the winners here. This is under 23 men's, um, and it was disc brakes all around. There was not, I didn't really see many, many rim brake bikes at all. We do see, though, the, the Criterium winner, Kim Ivory, uh, trainer from Adelaide, on rim brakes, wins the crit championship. So rim brakes win the crit, the men's crit, and in the under-23 men's, we can see here the different color in the necks. All right, this is a good one. This is a little race tip for you. If you want to have someone to mark in a race, check the color of the neck. You see, my neck's very red. What that means is a very, very good, healthy hemoglobin level, especially if we're talking, if you're talking athletic, fit men and women, if you see that red neck and ain't sunburn, it is red blood cells. So get on that wheel because that person's going to win the race. They're going to smash you to bits, assuming they're taking enough sugar and water every 30 minutes and they race smart and they don't have any mechanicals. It's bye-bye. That's the person to, to cover in the race. Otherwise, you just, you know, so just check the red, red neck, it's a red neck, that's a green, that's a red flag that they're going to drop your ass, <laughs> so get on their wheel, get the draft, hold on tight, keep carbon up, keep that sugar intake, so many cramps in the riders this race, it's like, why would you put so much effort in the race and not drink enough water, you know, what I mean? I'm just like, they travel all the way to Victoria, time off work, etc., and don't drink enough water, or don't take on enough sugar, you know, you need a, at least a litre per hour, at least 100, 120 grams of sugar per hour. This is the female winner. Uh, I think it's Nicole Frayne. Look how fresh-faced she looks. Very, very fresh-faced. You watch the interview straight after the race, and it's like, did she even ride the bike this morning? You know, She looks so fresh in the face. She's a 29, 30-year-old lady, and you know, just super fresh-faced. And this lighting's not even that flattering, but in the interviews, you know, she just looked like she'd you know, hadn't even ridden the bike, let alone raced and won this round of chance. Now you can see her face here compared to the other two girls, bronze and silver, their faces look a bit more stressed out, a bit more cortisol, but this girl in the win just looks super, super happy. And they're all, they're all happy because they've all done a fantastic uh, effort there. To get on the podium of the Nationals is no easy feat. But you can see the girl in the middle there, the Australian champ, uh, is it Nicola? Nicola, uh, just looking super fresh. And you watch interviews of her, super fresh. So the fresh face is a good sign of a healthy endocrine system, healthy hormones, good red blood cell count, etc. When the face looks too stressed, no good. A lot of mechanicals in the race. You see this chain here. I'm not sure if the, the battery was flat or there was some sort of mechanical going on here, but look at how slack that chain is. It's, well, I'm not sure what's going on here, but either way, you know, we can speculate maybe they didn't turn up with the charged battery, maybe it's just a malfunction. This is why a lot of pro riders prefer mechanical because with the mechanical, we don't have as many issues with the gears as you can have on DI2 electric. It's just, it's a, if it's electric, it's going to have happens. Uh, this is uh, James Whelan, Jimmy Whelan, riding, he got second place, really amazing attack, but he's riding an SL7 Tarmac, and I've got this exact bike, with the S-Works model, and it's a bucket of crap. It's so flexy, it's so cumbersome, so the fact that this kid got second, you know, second on a cyclocross bike, in the Australian Champs is a freaking fantastic. I don't know why he'd ride such a crap bike, <laughs> but look at this. This is the controversial part of the video. Look at that. That's Plap on the right and the disc brake SL7 on the left. And he literally rode away from this guy's like pro tour rider, James Whelan, you know, just came out of the pro tour, world tour. And this Plap guy riding past him like he's an E grader, an E grader. And this is Plap after the line. His eyes look a little bit stressed, which is, you know, Fair enough, but look at the color, look at the flush, high hemoglobin. This guy's got an amazing red blood cell count. Look at that color in the neck, you know? He's got a bit of tan lines there, but you can just see that full color flush. We'll get some more angles there, you can sort of see that color, and that's what you want. So I can, it's like a ripe mango, has color, and you can sort of see this is the guy who won yesterday. I think his last name's Quick. What a name. Quick for a last name as a cyclist winning the champs. And look at their legs, man. They're red as high hemoglobin, juicy tomato necks, and that's what you want. Right? If you want to have good performance, you've got to have a high hemoglobin, man. 
and whatever it takes to get that, do that because that's what your performance is based on. Sugar, water, red blood cells. Okay, look at those necks. You know, it looks so red and Aussie. You know, that's what you got to do. And look at the, you know, and these guys aren't even that lean. I mean, obviously they're not fat. I'm just saying, but for a, a road cyclist, you'd think they'd be like twiggies, twig, twiggy, twinks. These guys are, you know, bulky compared to the the guys that they beat. You know, so these guys are the heaviest riders in the bunch. In the you know, in their final top ten of you know that that final bunch, these guys are the heaviest riders there with the highest body fat levels, and they absolutely hosed everyone. You know what I mean? And this this guy on the right, he's riding SL7, like so he still won these under twenty three champs on a freaking cyclocross flexi crappy gravel bike junk SL7 Specialized, which I own. I'm not a specialized hater. I rate some of their product, but the SL7 is the worst bike to be riding if you're a racer. It's just a piece of junk, but he still won on that. That just goes to show you the class. Now, other riders are also on uh, cyclocross bikes, but in the road nats uh, for the men's, I do think, you know, I think Platt rode away from him far too easy, and I think we should ban rim brakes. You know what I mean? Like, he, he absolutely made him look like, you know, this, I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but there's two speeds right now in that race, rim brake and disc brake. Right? When you're talking to the guys who can actually win it, you know, like, what are we, why are we, why are we letting Plap have such an advantage by having lighter wheels, no rubbing rotors, you know, just no, just marginal gain advantage. Yesterday I was going up Norton Summit with a guy about 20 kilos lighter than me, pure, he looked like Nairo Quintana, just, you know, just love the bike, riding strong, and I, he's put me in a bit of hurt, you know, my fitness is not so good, I'm, 80 something kilos of full natty brown muscle and I haven't been riding much purposely to, to hit, the, hit the bulk but uh, I love riding my bike but anyway every time I got that saddle this guy's a lightweight rider he's probably like 55, 60 kilos or maybe less his rotor was rubbing ping, 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 ping every time I got the saddle and I can hear that I can hear it in front of me I was like man that's and that's good for me because it's going to be harder for him and I'm just I'm struggling here but th- we got to ban rim brakes like you make the decision UCI you know just stop giving the riders Two speeds in the peloton, disc brakes versus rim. You know, t- Team Sky Ineos are using these super lightweight bikes and lighter weight wheels, you know, and they've got the aero advantage because if you've ever ridden disc brakes, you feel the extra the extra spokes, is the extra drag, especially at the speeds these guys are riding at. So I was just looking at how effortlessly the flat rode away from everyone. You know, it was like, it was just two speeds, man. Rim brake, disc brake. So I think it's, it's unfair that the other teams are coerced and forced to ride disc brakes, but Team Ineos, Team Sky can just ride whatever they want. I think that we should ban disc brakes or rim brakes. I think we should ban rim brakes because they're just far superior and it's a such, a, such an advantage. And the market wants to sell disc brakes to the noobs out there who you know, just follow marketing nonsense. So we, the only solution is to ban rim brakes. UCI, ban the rim brakes. They're too much of an advantage. Look what just happened to Australian champs. You know, you got this plap kid who's not even in shape, who's got a lot of puppy fat on him, which is not a problem, not 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 not, not to shaming him. I'm just saying, like, you know, like you guys have got guys like Chris Harper who are super rail thin lean, but they're riding cyclocross bikes. How is that fair? You know what I mean? How is that fair? Like, how is that fair, man? That guys like Chris Harper, etc., have to ride a freaking cyclocross, a Cervelo cyclocross bike, and then you got dudes like Plap, talent freaks. You know, on a freaking proper race bike. It's just, it's, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong. It, it should be more even with the equipment, okay? You know, like two, two, two or three years ago, everyone had pretty much the same bike coming out of China, carbon fiber, rim brakes, SRAM or Shimano. Yep, much of a muchness. Now it's like cyclocross bike versus Tour de France winning bikes. It's, just, it's a joke. Um, so, anyway, that's my rant and rave. Congrats to everyone that went out there and had a crack at it. But man, there's people that are getting hydration cramps and it's just like, man, like, you know, like, what are you doing, man? Drink enough water so you're peeing clear every two hours at least the week beforehand, every day. Because um, it doesn't matter how fit you are, it doesn't matter how, what your hemoglobin is, if you don't drink enough water, bye-bye, bye-bye. You put all that work in there, you risk your life on the bike only to just pull out of a race or not do well because you didn't drink enough water, man. And <laughs> water's freaking free. You can fill up in someone's front yard. It's like, what's going on? And these riders out there, using disc brake bikes and they don't have to they're these you know, low budget teams like why are you riding shitty bikes man why are you going to up to nationals with a freaking cyclocross bike 
I mean, fair enough, if, if that's your team mandate, if you've got the coercion going on, yeah, you have to bend over and take it. But if you've got the choice to ride rim brakes, why would you ride disc brakes, man? Why would you turn up to the Nationals you know, with a freaking knife to a gunfight? It's just, it's crazy, man. But hey, a lot of people out there don't think, um, and that's unfortunate, they just follow. But look at that, Australian road champ, Plap. Congrats, mates. Hosed them. Absolutely hosed them.